We're down here at Quail Valley, the farm, and uh, Tyson Jones, a good friend of mine from, you know, when I first started playing disc golf, he used to live down in Emporia. He lives down here in Winfield, Kansas now, and is the kind of the caretaker of this property out here. It's a wedding venue, and it is an absolute gorgeous piece of property. We have over 40 acres to work with, a couple ponds, um, a nice few rows of trees. Uh, this is my second time coming to the property, and I needed to come back today to kind of check out a couple areas that were uh, a little overgrown and they've now been maintained and cut back. And I just need to check out a couple spots for transition. And uh, I really truly believe that this is a great place for an amazing disc golf course. So they also have this really amazing, beautiful old box car uh, on the property that used to be used for uh, the, the brides to kind of have a, a dressing room, a preparation room and we're gonna reconvert it into an actual pro shop for the golf course. So this is where people are gonna come, pay their whatever the price is gonna be to play the course, and maybe buy a couple discs as well. One of the most important things when designing a course is finding a starting point and a finishing point. And ideally you would like to start somewhere near a parking lot or a pro shop. So this is gonna be dedicated to where we're gonna to wanna to start the course and where we're gonna to wanna to finish the course as well. Looks like we got a property line out here, but this does create a nice little pocket. If you look kind of back, it has a nice little pocket for a, uh, a nice green. Putting a disc golf basket back in here would be kind of ideal, assuming we have transition across this way, because you don't want to have a shot where you're throwing into a hole and then you have to walk directly out of it and kind of back down the same fairway. So flow, safety and flow, those are the top two priority lists when it comes to designing a disc golf course. Not sure how, how well or easy you're gonna be able to see this. But on my map I pull up, I have a, a, an app. There's a couple of them that I use, Onyx and Map Plus. I can pull this up and I can drop a pinpoint exactly where I'm at, current position saved. Later on I can go back and edit that. I can change the, the icon. I can have the latitude, longitude of the exact area of where I'm at and it's within like one meter or something like that. So it's really uh, specific on the spot, the location that I'm marking. But an area like this where you have a nice tree line on one side, um, you know, kind of flower beds or roads on the other side that, that work as a natural OB. Nice uphill, some tunnel action. You know, you don't get a whole lot of that. This is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for when I'm walking the property for the course. Um, for me, it's very important to find a starting hole and a finishing hole, and then kind of work around the other 16 in between. But uh, Definitely walking the area and noticing a spot like this and putting it on my map as a GPS coordinate is important. Something that I can go back when I'm studying the maps to remember, this was a beautiful area. This was an area that I'd absolutely want to use some way, some shape or form. So the other thing I like to do is establish the boundaries. So currently we are on the furthest I think southeast corner of the property. Found a fence line on this side. This is kind of uh, as far this way as we can go. And I like to determine where those points are. So I know mentally when I go back study maps or I'm coming through doing the, the final design to know I don't have a lot of room back in this corner to work with. So right here we have a creek that kind of runs off those two ponds. The, the further pond is a little more elevated than the next pond, so naturally they kind of drain into each other. And this is kind of acts as a spillway. So when it rains a lot and the water's coming out, this is kind of a rushing area. There's some standing water in it now, and I just kind of want to get an idea 
of how difficult it's going to be to cross the creek if we happen to have to have a hole going across it or uh, how, how challenging it's going to be to build a bridge or that type of scenario. Luckily, this is a smaller creek. Um, there's already a pretty good sized tree here that's dead that we could actually utilize as a bridge for this private course. But yeah, just keep it in mind, there's, there, there's steps that you got to go through and hurdles that you may have to get through if there's a creek that runs through the property as far as getting from one side to the other uh, and making sure that it is uh, safe. backside of where we just were in the open field and uh, which creates a nice transition nice tight tunnels all through here that plays along this pond and just all around beautiful not a whole lot of maintenance that needs to be done for the property with the exception of mowing the lawn that they already do for this particular uh, design there's there's not a whole lot of maintenance that's going to need to be involved Thinking that this spot that we're standing right here is a beautiful spot for a green. You've got this gorgeous natural rock wall here built onto the side of the hill. And then you've got this old uh, water wheel. I'm not sure the exact term for it, but it is pretty cool. And it's obviously not in use anymore, but uh, it's really cool to utilize stuff like that. And then you've got the natural pond on the left side with the nice, you know, rock wall that goes all the way around it. It's just very picturesque green, and that's really what we look for in these type of properties. So now that we've completed my second trip down here, I'm even more excited about the property than I was my first trip. Now I'm gonna head home study some maps, pull up Google Earth, and look at the GPS coordinates that I've taken today to get a good idea on the direction I want to go with this course. <laughs> 